Hello everyone, in this video we are going to look at how to make decisions using CMake. And uh, the command that we will be using here is the if command which is documented at the CMake documentation here. So if you want you can really read it. And uh, this command is going to conditionally execute a group of commands. This is really like any other programming languages. If something is true you do something. If something else is true you do something. And you see within this parenthesis we have a condition. So if the condition evaluates to true, we do something. If it's not true, we do something else. You can really nest these decisions using else if. And one thing you need to see is that you have to end your if with an end if block as you see here. So your code is going to show up within this block if I can say it like that. You can read all about this command. There is really a lot you need to know and it can be confusing if it is the first time you use this. Just to get started, I prepared a few examples that we can go through together. And uh, here is our first example. We are declaring a variable called var1 here and we are storing in a true value. And to make a test, you don't try to evaluate what is stored in var1. You don't say if dollar sign and try to evaluate what is inside. You pass the name of the variable like we are doing here. And CMake will know to read what is inside and make decisions based on that. So in this case, we have a true inside var1. This is going to execute. If we have a false inside, we're going to execute the next line here. This is what I am trying to say. And to really make things easy, I shared my understanding of how the condition for the if command here works. We are passing in var1 here, and the way CMake does this, it's going to see if the variable is undefined. So if we pass a variable that is undefined, it is going to be false, and we will execute this line here. If the variable is defined and explicitly set to false, okay, so if we define it and pass the false here, we are going to execute the second block for false here. If it is neither of these two cases, then the condition is going to be true. Try to take a moment and wrap your brain around this because otherwise you are going to be confused by this if statement in CMake or the if command as they like to call it in the CMake documentation. Again, if the variable is undefined, it's going to be false. If the variable is defined and explicitly set to false, it's going to be false. Otherwise, it's going to be true. In this case, the variable is defined and it has a true inside. So this is going to fall in this case and it is going to be true and we will execute this command here. So this is the first thing I want you to see. Again, if you want to learn more, you can go at the CMake documentation and learn as much as you need about this. I am going to show you another example of what some people might try to do and this is going to be a recipe for disaster if you are not careful. Some people are going to declare a variable like this and pass a true or a one, okay, something like this. And in the if statement, when they pass the condition, they will try to evaluate what is inside the variable. So this is effectively the same as saying if and passing a one because we are reading what is inside var2 and passing that inside. This may work if you are willing to go and change policies, but I don't really want to go into that. I would recommend trying to use the default policies in CMake because your code is going to be understandable by most people. So in this case, I don't really recommend this. You see the comment here, the only way I could get this to print true is if I pass one, if I pass true or false, it's really not going to do anything. It's going to give me a bunch of errors as we are about to see in a minute when we hit Visual Studio Code. What I am trying to say here is try to avoid this way of doing things. It's going to make your code confusing and it's not a good thing. Let's see if we can find another example here. We have an example that basically repeats the same thing. We have var1 and it's set to off and we have var2 which is set to var1. Okay, so we just want to evaluate from var2, get to var1 and then make a test based on that if that is making any sense. So this is what we are doing here. 
The evaluation we're doing here is going to pass var1 inside our if command and we are going to read the value that is inside. The value is defined, the variable is defined, as I should say, and it is explicitly set to false, so this is going to be false, okay? We will try this out in a minute when we hit Visual Studio Code. But if you say if var2 here, okay, so what is going to happen here? The variable is defined, yes, it is defined here. Is it explicitly set to false? No, so this is going to evaluate to true, and we will see this running when we hit Visual Studio Code in a minute. Here is a bunch of other examples. The if command allows you to do a lot of things. You can compare, you can really do all kinds of crazy things. In this case, we are testing if two integers are equal. If they are equal, we follow here. If they are not, we follow here. We can compare numbers just like we are doing here. We can compare strings. And if you want more information on this, I strongly recommend you come to the documentation and read about all these things here. I think if we go down, you see we have comparisons for paths. We can compare versions. We can compare strings. We can really do all kinds of crazy things. And in your career as a CMake developer or as a CMake bold developer, if you need to compare things, please come to this link and see if you can't find something useful to you. Now that we have covered this, I think it is high time we went to Visual Studio Code and saw this in action. Let's do this. Here I am in my Visual Studio Code editor. I am going to comment out the things that I have below here because we want to start from the top. So what do we do? Let's comment out the comparisons here and go all the way to the top. Okay, conditions with the if command, you can read this if you want. It is the information I shared. So we are setting var1 to true and we are testing against what is stored in var1. If the value in there is true, we're going to fall here and say var1 is true. If it's false, we're going to say it is false. Let's try to run this script. The script is stored in a file named for flow control.cmake. Make sure you can see that. So let's run this and say cmake p, you know the flag we passed to execute a script and we will say for and if we run this it is going to say var1 is true try to think about the rule that we established here if the variable is undefined evaluate it to false our variable is not undefined it is defined here okay if the variable is defined and set to false evaluate it to false it is not explicitly set to false, so this is out of the window, and we will for here, this is going to be true. That's why we see a true here. Let's try to undefine this variable to see if what I am telling you is true. So if we do this, var1 is not defined. We are trying to test against it. We will fall in this condition here, and it should say that it is false. Let's try this. Let's run, and uh, it is going to say it's false. Let's try to define it and not set it to false explicitly. Let's try and put in the sky is blue, okay? And see what we get. Again, is if the variable is undefined, evaluate to false. The variable is defined, so this is out of the window. If the variable is defined and set to false, evaluate to false, so it is defined, but it is not set to false, so this is out of the window. We will fall here and it should say true. Let's try to run this and see variable is true. And now you see that CMEC can really do weird decisions. And it is important to keep this rule in mind. It really helps me a lot when I'm making my CMEC decisions. Once you do this a couple of times, it's going to become second nature. But if you are starting with CMEC, this is going to help you avoid a lot of confusion. So be careful about that. We have used true and false. Let's try and pass in true again to make sure this is right. So it is going to say true, but there are a bunch of other constants that you can pass in CMake. For example, you can pass on. Okay, it is going to also be true, on and off. These are what I use the most, but there may be others in the CMake documentation if you do. Okay, you see on, yes true why all these are going to be true let's try one okay so we we can try this we are learning so one should be a true or let's pass a zero 
and see it should be a false because a false is documented here so zero is negative off is negative no is negative false is negative and is negative ignore is negative not found is negative let's try all these let's pass zero okay zero and run it's going to be false we can pass no okay <laughs> And it's going to be false let's find another one we can use we can use ignore and not found let's do ignore and see what we can do and not found as we saw in the documentation and if we run this it's going to say false as well so you can use this but i prefer to use on okay on and off or true and false you can use whatever you want now that you know these things here Let's bring this back to true, okay? Hopefully you know how to use this command. Please try this out and make sure this rule here is making things clear to you. Now, another thing I see people do is try to evaluate what is stored in a variable and pass the evaluated value inside an if command like we are doing here. Again, var2 is set to one and we want to test not by directly passing the variable in, but by evaluating what is inside. Let's try and see what's going to happen if we run this. So we can run our script. And if we do that, it's going to say true. Okay, let's try other constants we have seen before. So let's try and uh, pass. What can we pass? Let's pass off. Okay, and see what we get. Let's pass false now this is going to go weird on me okay let's pass true and you see that it is going to throw a bunch of errors saying that an argument named true appears in a conditional statement policy is not set so this is really not going to work well in your favor and to make this work you probably need to change a few settings in terms of the policy that your CMake instance is using. I don't really recommend going into this if you are beginning with CMake and if you want things to work by default. That's why I strongly recommend to stay away from evaluating variables inside your if command here. I do recommend directly passing the variable name. And this is something that comes from the old days of CMake and it really works in most cases. So this is a warning, please try to avoid this. It is going to give you headaches. Let's look at a few other examples. For example, we can go down here. Okay, so we have var1, it is set to off. Okay, we have var2, it is set to var1. If we evaluate var2, we will get var1. So this is basically the same thing as saying if var1, basically. Okay, var this is the same thing as we are doing here, but let's come back and see what we get. Okay, so what do you think we'll see if we run this program here? Let's comment out what we have below here so that we can focus only on this. Try to think about it. Okay, I am going to think out loud here. So var2, the evaluation here is going to say var1. Okay, so it is the same thing as passing var1. And var1 is explicitly set to off, okay, as we have seen before. So it should say that var2 is false. Let's try to run our script and see. It should say false, and it is indeed saying false. Now, if we uncomment this, try to think about what is going to happen. We are passing var2 immediately, okay? Var2 is defined on top here but it is not explicitly set to false. So it is going to say var2 is true. Let's try and run here and see what we get. You see var2 is true, but this is really not intuitive, okay? It is not true. In many programming languages, I would even argue that, okay, so it is not true, really. It, it has another value which is not true, but it is saying it is true. This can be confusing. Please try to avoid this kind of thing. If you want to make a test against a bull that is stored in some variable, please make sure it is storing a value like off or negative or whatever, as we have seen in the CMake documentation here. And if you are making tests, make sure you pass the variable name as we have done here. 
Now that we have seen this, let's look at a few other comparisons that you can do. I'm not going to give you much, but this should make you familiar with how we compare things in CMake. So this is going to say if two is equal to one, do something here. If it's not, do something here. So what do you think this is going to print? Let's try to run. Okay, so we can uh, clear and run our script. It is going to say two not equal to one as we expect here. Let's go down and uh, uncomment this. Okay. So, and we need to uncomment this. Dog is 13, pig is 12. If pig is less than dog, we do this. If it's not, we do this. What do you think we're going to see? Let's run and see. Pig is less than dog, and we have a lesser value in pig. So this is working as expected. We can also compare strings. Okay, so pig and dog. Okay, and uh, what do we have in here? And you see that we, we have a problem here. And down here, we have an example that tries to compare strings. But this is a bit weird because we don't have strings stored in here. Let's see what CMake does. Maybe it's going to treat the data in here as strings. So let's clear and run our script. And it is going to say pig less than or equal to dog. Okay. And it is less. So CMake is thinking that this is less than this. And uh, to really make sure this is comparing strings, you should explicitly store strings in there. For example, you can say cow and let's see dog. Okay, and try to see what you get if you compare these strings here. Again, this is just an example, pig not less than or equal to dog. It is going to do lexicographical comparisons of string. And this is something you may want to do in your CMake applications. This is really all I had to share in this lecture. The main thing I want you to take home is this set of rules here, because it's going to help you out if you are confused about how these conditions are passed to the if command. This is something that confused me for a long time, and I hope I can help you avoid that confusion. I am going to stop here in this video, and I will see you next time.